Hey everybody, my name is Alyssa Brandt. I work at GBBN Architects, but not as an architect. I am a writer in their marketing department. And today we're going to talk a little bit about communication. I'm going to share my screen. So welcome to Project Pipeline 2020, the virtual edition. Like I said, today we're going to dig into good communication tips for architects. Uh, as an architect, good communication is really, really important and we're going to talk about why. Before we do that though, let me move myself down here. Before we do that, I, I want to look at a few really cool architecture projects. This one is the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C., designed by David Ajay. This is the Barnes Foundation in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, designed by Todd Williams, Billy Shen. And this is the Aqua Tower in Chicago, Illinois, designed by Jeannie Gang. As you can see from all these projects, they are very, very different. They are in different parts of the country, they are by different designers, they use different materials, and they are different building types. However, they all have something in common because they all started the same way. Somebody had an idea and they shared it. Creating good architecture is all about good communication. It is critically important. Why, you may ask, why do I need to know about communication if I want to create cool buildings? Uh, because the ability to create cool buildings depends on how well you can communicate. Your primary job as an architect is going to be to win work. And you're going to do that by creating proposals, writing proposals, making presentations, talking to clients. You're going to need to persuade stakeholders like government entities and neighborhood councils and community groups why your design is good. You might need to convince your own colleagues about why your design approach is the right one. Throughout your career, throughout your education, you're always going to be called upon to defend your design. So having good communication skills, speaking and writing clearly and concisely about your work is really going to help you. I have pulled together 10 communication tips for architects, but really they're appropriate for everybody. First and foremost, know your audience. This is the most important tip of all. Always know who you are going to be writing to or speaking to. Uh, is it a future employer? Is it your grandmother? Is it a friend from this camp? Is it someone who knows something about architecture or someone who doesn't know anything about architecture? Your audience's level of understanding is really going to determine how you should best talk to them. The second tip I would give you is to try to keep things as simple as possible. Focusing on one or two key ideas will increase your audience's understanding. Architectural projects are so detailed and, and there's so many things that go into them, it's impossible to put every single detail into every piece of writing or every, pre every presentation. But keeping things simple, focusing on one or two key ideas is really going to help people understand the story of your project. Is the main idea of the project its sustainability? Is it its circulation? Is it uh, another problem that the, the project is solving for people? Really focusing on, on one or two main ideas uh, is the best approach. When you are talking about your work, it is always good to be specific because details bring stories to life. Saying something like, the mustard colored Vespa is more interesting and evocative and more descriptive than just saying motorcycle. The same is true for architecture. However, what you want to avoid is jargon. Jargon refers to all the specialty vocabulary that you will be learning in school and that you will use with your architectural peers. Every specialized industry has specialized language that practitioners use to talk to each other. Doctors, lawyers, artists, computer programmers, architects, athletes, any specialized industry has specialized language. So what 
you want to, what you want to do is avoid using jargon when you are talking to audiences that aren't familiar with your industry. Chances are most of your clients will not be architects and will not be familiar with a lot of the concepts you will be learning in school and using day to day in your work. So being able to describe projects in a way that makes it understandable for people by using everyday language is really, really important. Using your work to tell stories is always good. And I think you guys had a previous lesson about um, good storytelling techniques uh, visually. Whether you are creating a diagram or writing a description of a project you're working on or writing a proposal, telling stories about your work is really important. And the important thing to remember is stories are about people. Trying to keep the focus on how your project is helping people in the community. How is it making their lives better? What problem is it solving for them? Uh, that is going to help draw your audience into your project and make them care about it. The other thing to remember, though, is that you need to get to the point. We live in a world where everybody's attention span is very, very short now. On average, you have about seven seconds to get somebody's attention. That's incredibly short. So make sure whatever story you're telling, you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Think about what is the takeaway you want your audience to have? What do you want them to know when they're done reading or listening to you? And try writing to that point. But being able to convey your ideas uh, concisely and clearly is very, very important. Clear writing and clear speaking convey clear thinking, and that's going to be important to your clients. Two of the best communication tools that anybody has live on either side of the head, and those are our ears. There is nothing worse than an elegant architectural solution to the wrong problem. So listening closely to your clients is going to be very, very important so that you can understand their needs and their challenges and how architecture can best help them solve their problem. While you are listening, be sure to ask questions. It's always okay to say, I don't understand, or let me make sure I understand you. It sounds like you want a swimming pool and not a play field. Did I hear that correctly? Asking questions and digging deeper and asking people to clarify what they mean is going to help you understand their needs better and it's going to help you uh, create projects that are more successful for your clients. Writing and revising are very important. It's always a good idea to write a practice first. If you're going to send an email about a job or write a cover letter about a job, take some time and write a rough draft on a scrap piece of paper or anything. Just write, write down a practice and then have somebody else take a look at it. Having someone else put fresh eyes on something you've written will help make sure that you've spelled everything correctly, that you've made your points well that you have the correct grammar and, and, and everything like that. It's always good to get a fresh pair of eyes on something and then take a little bit of extra time to revise the first thing you've written. Then, before you hit send, try reading whatever you've created out loud. Reading out loud forces you to slow down and that can reveal typos, it can reveal punctuation mistakes or grammar mistakes, it's also a good way to put yourself in the shoes of the person who's going to be receiving this information. When you're reading something out loud, if it sounds weird to you, it's probably going to sound weird to them. So take a moment to make sure that you're putting the best draft of your work out there in the world before you hit send. If you want something to practice, um, I would suggest this as an exercise. Pick, pick a favorite piece of architecture and write a paragraph about it. It can be your favorite piece, or it can be one of the pieces we talked about at the beginning. Um, but write like five to seven sentences about what you love about it, or why it even exists. Why was this project made? How does it help people? What problems does it solve for people? And what's innovative about it? So that's one thing uh, you can try.
The other thing I wanted to leave you with were some links to other pieces of architectural writing. The first group are from architectural websites, so you can start to understand how architects write about architecture. But I also want you to look at some general media uh, links, different newspapers and magazines where people are writing about architecture for a more general audience. And take a look at some of these links and you'll, you'll start to notice a difference between the way architects write about architecture and the way journalists write about architecture. So it could be kind of interesting to look and, and compare both of them. Thanks a lot for tuning in today. I hope this was helpful and good luck with the rest of your summer.